All right, Troy here, Quad Standard Labs. Uh, we are taking a look at something that we've had a lot of questions about and I wanted to go through and run through uh, some different um, features, reasoning behind this particular build and more so what this represents and what's possible outside of this as well as just this platform and obviously kind of going and walking through it. So. Um, Really quickly, this is a CineWave by DroneCo that we have heavily modified uh, with a lot of different things in terms of how we built it, uh, as well as what is on board. Uh, you obviously notice on board there is a gimbal with a hero. Uh, the gimbal is by Ghostand Designs, uh, ghostanddesigns.com. You can actually purchase them there. You can purchase them through us. There's two models. This model, which is the uh, uh, micro version I believe uh, and then or the mini and then the micro version which is the naked GoPro version it's a smaller weighs about a hundred grams less 75 to 800 grams less uh, and has smaller motors because of the smaller weight it doesn't need uh, the bigger motors um, however this one is running a hero 7 and First off, this particular reason, or this particular build is running a Hero 7 because it's got an HDMI cable attached coming directly out, which yes, you can do with later models. However, the later models require a mod uh, that goes on the, the Hero. Those Heroes also weigh more, and then you add the mod and it becomes a bit overwhelming. So the only option would be to go full naked, but then it would take a really customized naked build to still have the HDMI port and all the other things. So this particular build was built to be very versatile, be able to be transformed from this build over into another build, like a seven inch to go outside, chase stuff with your GoPro as well. And what you see here is a backpack that we've made uh, with a SWIT 2K. So this is a SWIT 2K transmitter, takes the HDMI feed in uh, and transmits it back to the village or wherever you have your other uh, SWIT receiver at, and then that can be piped into the truck. <clears throat> this build has already actually been used in live broadcast without the gimbal. Uh, it was used at the UFC event at Madison Square Garden, November 2022, uh, and went really well. Uh, the reason we have it back is to install the gimbal to add some more functionalities, <clears throat> as well as uh, give a horizon lock stabilized video feed rather than the FPV immersive experience, right? Uh, just something that is being wanted to be done. Um, so talking about this build, like I said, naked switch, able to transmit whatever you pipe into it. Uh, you're really only transmitting at 1080. So again, any other 4K or greater uh, camera, you're not really going to be transmitting to, you know, in 4K. So no need for anything better technically. Um, this build is also set up with something special, just wanted to mention it, uh, which allows you to keep everything on board constantly running when you're doing battery changes. Uh, this is particularly important for your SWIT and obviously your Hero. The Hero is running a battery, but it can actually be powered off the gimbal directly. There is actually a cable that you can install uh, and use for USB-C uh, power or some other power. Um, and that's all detailed within Ghost Stand and their product. But um, this is a hot swap power module, also by Ghost Stand that we've actually had for a couple of years now. Uh, this hot swap module allows you to use a battery which is equal voltage to a depleted 6S in this case. Uh, plug it into the drone which will keep power running. There's a diode inside that keeps everything from flowing back into the other battery uh, and then allows you to disable the flight pack, install a new flight pack and then you can disable this and go back to flying. Everything staying powered on. We'll show you that real quick. Uh, <clears throat> power on everything you'll notice the gimbal takes a few seconds it'll beep whenever it's ready to go there it is it's it's ready um, we now have power going to the drone uh, we're gonna go ahead turn this around Let's see if I can show you this we have a little XT30 connector plugged in right here which is also or not plugged in wired in to the main power so we will take 
our hot swap pack, plug it in. We can then disable the flight pack so the flight pack is no longer connected, but you see the gimbal is still moving because everything is still powered on, including the drone and the switch. We then can reconnect the flight pack, disable, there you go. Mm -hmm. Nothing powered off, it's still ready to go. And what you'll notice right now is the next thing we're gonna talk about. So how can you use this in a very versatile way without having a ton of workflow in changing over uh, from how you wanna operate it? And what I mean by that is uh, this gimbal can actually be fully tuned and set up to do a multitude of advanced uh, uh, user interface and control. Uh, and what I mean by that is you can essentially set this gimbal up just as you can any production arm or gimbal system with all kinds of speed ramping and exponentials, all kinds of different switches to do different things, including yes, you can recenter um, and all of the things that you want out of a gimbal system, you can actually do a lot of advanced programming on and set your radios up to do so. However, we wanted to make this one kind of as easy to use as possible with three different options of how to fly it. So this drone actually has the DJI FPV system on board for the pilot and it has SBUS connected currently set up in Betaflight to read the SBUS signal to control the drone. So in this mode, we have our DJI radio and I'll show you, we can, Sorry. We can, I actually have, go. Power cycle. So in this mode with the DJI radio connected, we can actually fly the drone and the gimbal when activated mm -hmm. will remain moving in its normal function of keeping the horizon. So this is what we would consider just a standby mode. Um, so that's flying your DJI system and that's gonna keep flying in that method. So we'll go ahead. I gotta bind this. Uh, Find this radio real quick. All right, and we now have access to, to the drone to arm it with the DJI radio. So now we can go fly this thing. It will just stay 100% locked in on the horizon and keep everything nice and visually stabilized. Um, that is the first method. So method one for flying. Now the other thing that we can do, which is awesome, is we can go in and while this is actually running still the DJI radio to fly, we can actually also now control the gimbal with a few different methods, but this method currently is using the stick control on the crossfire radio that's connected. This is where we can now go in and with the GUI, we can reprogram and do a bunch of stuff to make this radio work with the crossfire that is connected to the gimbal and fly it using SBUS. So this is a dual op set up right here and all we had to do was turn the radio on in order to talk to the gimbal when we turn the radio off the gimbal goes back into standby mode and will just keep the horizon wherever you fly so next method 
we can actually also, if the DJI radio for some reason is not going to be the best protocol for the you know, 2.4 or 5.8 environment, uh, sorry, 5.8 environment, uh, we could move over to the Crossfire radio very simply by going ahead and in beta flight again. going into our port settings switching to UART 2 one more quick change we need to tell it to look for the crossfire receiver instead of SBUS And now, oh, well, it's not saving. Sorry, give me one sec. There we go. Bada bing, bada boom. I need to do one last thing, which is I need to change my model from what I was using, which was the stick control to now the flying controls. And you see that it moved because we have some different setup now. So now we've actually got the sliders moving the gimbal. So while we're flying, if we're told we need to adjust something, we can adjust. And we also have roll. And again, we could actually do some more advanced controls on here for recentering and different modes of the gimbal. This just shows the versatility in how you can run two different radios in either a single op on DJI or a single op on Crossfire or Fly, flying on DJI and running the Crossfire as your dual op control. Now, the last piece of this puzzle, if you don't have a naked switch, the question is, well, Troy, how do I get the feed from the uh, Hero and understand what I'm shooting? Again, two different methods here. One, HD video transmitter can be connected. Uh, it's only a two axis gimbal. So as long as you do some nice tightening up of the wiring, you should be able to get it to fly uh, with the wires dangling in a, an appropriate way. Uh, number two, you could also uh, be attaching a DJI Vista air unit to the gimbal, which would then allow you to frame it with the FPV camera from the air unit on your second operator uh, wearing a second set of goggles. If you're gonna do that, we would definitely recommend you have your uh, flight camera running at you know 700, maybe 1200 milliwatt, uh, and you lower your uh, hero camera operator down to maybe 25 or 200 milliwatts. Uh, basically do some testing, play with the channels, right hands and left hands are always obviously applicable, but we also have on our switch some true RC antennas as well, and we are keeping the polarization of right hand, left hand out of play here uh, for these systems. So that's a quick look at everything that's possible with this system. And remember, the platform that this is on is irregardless, you know, is not it's agnostic. It doesn't matter what we put this on. This is actually probably the smallest platform you would want to fly all of this gear on because it does push the limits of what's capable with a three and a half inch. But we were trying to keep the form factor as small as possible. We were also trying to, again, to keep full feature or full functionality of the camera, make it easy to swap other cameras in and out and not have to worry about a naked decased camera that has to be rebuilt in some custom way to accept power and all the different things the way we need to clear everything while also maintaining that HDMI output. So hopefully this gives you a good look at what we were really trying to accomplish here. Um, <clears throat> at the end of the day, uh, we really just are here to 
you know, build anything and everything we can to help people uh, in their applications and their use cases understand exactly what's going on um, for them, what can be used to bring a more controlled flight experience and a more immersive experience while also maintaining the traditional stabilized look at times that is really necessary for some higher output um, platforms and, and broadcasting. So I uh, hope this makes sense. Fly safe, fly smart, just fly. Peace.